Hey man, give me a, a one case of DOS Merlot. Marvelous choice, sir. Just thing right here. 78587. My goodness, these look brand new. Straight from the press, man. Very good. All right. Keep the change, man. We won't get very far with that. What are you talking about? I was paid for counterfeit bills and how to pass them off as real. Man, I just seen you do it. Earlier today, I came to the same store and I replaced their black markers with one of these counterfeit markers. So the markers are counterfeit too? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't think my boss is gonna like this, man. I have to do better than that, and he'll have to go international where he'll pay a whole lot more. Oh, you might want to disguise yourself. These cameras are always watching. What about you, man? You look good in long hair. Is this for your show? Most of it. Max, I'm glad you could make it. And who is this lovely lady? Joan, this is one of the world's best realists, Frank. Max, you know better than that. Actually, I am the best. <laughs> I don't know. Dear Donnie's a Max, pretty good painter. what do you think of this painting over here? Oh, hon, it's your building. I like this. I thought you might. I painted this one especially for you. One of those nights you were working late. Is that my office? Take a closer look. Hey, it's me. Frank, you are the best. Whatever the price, I'll take it. A blank check. I will see you tomorrow. Frank, you've got company. Tell me. Two guys from the street looks like they're going to wait for you, though. What do you think? If they're unarmed, we should be all right. We need this. I'm going in. Let me know when you're ready to come out, and I'll take care of these guys. You? <laughs> yeah, OK.
Did you get it? Any problems? Uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Um, I'll meet you at the parking garage. At 2 o'clock, space 36. to the home alarm. No, I don't like Lucky. No, 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 no. I think it'll work. I don't like I think either. <sighs> what do you want me to do? First prop open the door and then... Right. Do it on three. No, not on three. What will be the signal? You'll know. Thinking maybe you did good, huh? Still too close. Thinks it's someone else. So I already got a scapegoat. That's right. Trish, why don't you wait here? You're here. That is a good sign. You were short on some information. Short? So do you have it or not? I don't like surprises. You know what that coin is worth? I do. About three million. I also don't like surprises. Why wouldn't you steal it for yourself? I did. It's good. And I just fenced it to you. Pay him. I can't afford to hold on to my trophies, like you. Yeah. <sighs> 
Did you hear? I did. He obviously had his doubts. Yeah. I'm not sure if he did. So the coin you brought was a fake. <laughs> but it was the one we stole. <laughs> Yet it wasn't any better than the one you replaced it with. What if they realized it was a fake? Well, that's what the backup was for. For things that are that valuable, you need to charge more than $50,000. It's not worth that much. Hey, with only five in the world to compare with, even the experts aren't always sure. So the guy said it was authentic so his expertise wouldn't be challenged? But if the experts declare it genuine, <laughs> then there's no fraud. Where there were five 1913 that are real niggas in the world, now there are seven. <laughs> I've never seen moves that fast. What are you here for, Detective? Frank, where were you two nights ago on Sunday, April 1st, between the hours of 12 a.m. and 3 a.m.? Usually asleep at that time. And were you alone? Detective, if you need me to find someone to give me an alibi, I'm sure I could easily get one. I have a video of you stealing from one of your patrons that attended the art show last Thursday night. A video? Detective, you're fishing. If you're gonna arrest me, then do it. Otherwise, leave. Breaking and entering, assault with a deadly weapon, battery, <laughs> theft of a diamond necklace worth over a million dollars. The last time the victim was seen wearing it was at your show. Everyone sees the guest registry as they come to my shows. The information easily could have been passed on to anyone from anyone. And it could have been Donald here for all you know. I'd like to see this, uh, this video you're talking about. Well, I'll tell you what. Come down to the police station and I'll show you. <sighs> no thanks. This guy in the video, is he, uh, built like me? Yes. Oh, sort of like Donald over here. Stop playing around. Well, I assure you, detective, I'm not playing. The people at your show know you and that gives you easy entry into their homes. The same he is as a cop with a badge. Wouldn't you say there's reasonable room for doubt? You can go. No, this is good. I want to hear more. What you need is a video with details. Say, two unmasked men exchanging cash for diamonds in a parking garage. A parking space number where the exchange took place, say, 36, for example. Now, detective, wouldn't that kind of information be worth something? See an easy payday. The two guys outside the home we robbed? We had the upper hand then, as now. I don't think that applies to dirty cops. They're a breed all their own. So we should be watching our backs, huh? Only me, brother. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, Trish. Tony? Grandfather needs to talk to you. You know what this is about? Not a clue. Jackie. Let's go, Mom. No. Mom, come on. Antone told me what you two did. And I, I want to know what you're going to do about it. I'll fill you in later. Let's take a walk.
I know it's only been a month since your father died. This man played a big part putting my son in an early grave. How? By robbing him of his first love. You mean Frank's real mother? Was he also responsible for her death? Why haven't I heard about this before? Because of Jackie. Anton wanted to start over with your mother. But the things that... Basically, this guy has messed up the lives of both of my parents. Well, I lost my wife, it hurt, but nothing has caused me as much pain as losing my son. So you want to start this guy? No. Someone he loves. A son. I made a promise to your father, and I want you to promise me. An eye for an eye. Frank has lost both a mother and a father over this. He would lose no sleep in taking care of this guy. No, Jake, you handle it. Frank is not to be involved in this in any way. Grandfather, I'll take care of it. There, there's our target. There's gonna be some collateral damage. Yeah, well, collateral damage is why we're here. Hey, 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 don't wake up mommy. Don't wake up mommy. Hey. Can't wait. Oh no. She had breakfast yet? She has. <laughs> Why don't you and Bree come to work with me today? What for? Well, today I'm sharing with David my plans on expanding the cabinet shop. Bum, 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 bum. I hear Daddy's heart. Are you sure he's ready to deal with that? Well, he needs something to take his mind off that awful divorce other than the well, liquor. We both knew it wouldn't last when they found out that she couldn't give him what he wanted. How about on the way and we drop Bree at mom and dad's? Sounds good. <laughs> Steve, what are you doing here? Well, I came to see if you'd give me my job back. Steve, you've come in late, you've come in drunk, and I worked with you on that. But stealing our tools, that was it. Man, I need this job. And I need good employees. But I thought you Christians were supposed to be forgiving. I did forgive you, and I can help you overcome whatever after work. But I don't have to employ you. Man, I don't need that kind of help. I need money for my family. Steve, it sounds like the only regret you have is in getting caught. Are you going to give me my job back or not? No. Steve, Steve. This ain't over. Come on. Steve, Steve. Steve, you don't have to do this. Katie, can I talk to you for a minute? Chris is in the shop. He has something left to show you. I know, but I wanted to say something to you first. Hey, where are things at with you and Sharon? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, nobody's here. Go ahead. Now that Sharon's gone, I've been thinking about how you and I used to date, and I can't remember how I lost you to Chris. In short, you weren't ready to settle down. I'm, I'm kicking myself for ever losing you. You blew your chance. Now you've got to stop this. Wait. You know, one of the reasons I helped Chris start this company was so that I could be there for you if you needed me. I'm sorry, David, but you need to respect the fact that I am married. Seriously, Katie, you know Chris's children should have been mine. There it is. 
Chris and I should have just continued flipping homes. You wouldn't believe what just happened. What? Steve came by, wanting his job back. You said no, I hope. Of course. But he swung at me and missed, so I just tried to push him away, but he fell. Did he get hurt? No, but he left with a warning that this isn't over. Did anyone else hear the threat? Yeah. Good, it's always helpful to have witnesses just in case. Do you think we should call the police? I, I guess it wouldn't hurt to file a report. But for now, are you ready? Let's see what you have. Okay, so it's not a very big change, but with the additional space, we can add four additional workstations. Are you sure this is the direction we should be headed? Absolutely, we'll be the best custom cabinet shop in the area. Looks like the only time he's alone is when he's walking his dog or running. Running will give us more options. Tomorrow then? Yeah. I'll be back. I'm gonna get something to eat. Call you later. Sir, can I see your driver's license, please? Yes. Thank you. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? I got a call while eating and I dropped my sandwich. Oh, okay, I see. I'll be right back. Sir, would you turn the engine off and step out of the vehicle, please? Sir, would you turn around and put your hands behind your back? Sir, it looks like there's a warrant for your arrest for parole violation out of Georgia. And we have a report of a man fitting your description who purchased a watch with funny money in Louisville. It wouldn't be this watch, would it? It was a birthday present. From a rich relative, no doubt. Trish, where's Frank? Fighting the light. Father actually had us take care of one last job before he dies, so. And without Jake, that's not happening. Yeah, that's actually why I'm here. I'm not sure why you weren't involved in the first place, but uh, seems like you don't have a choice anymore. Well, what's in it for us? Revenge, actually. Grandfather said the man involved had something to do with our father's death. And your mother's. Really? Well, give me the details. Tomorrow night. The guys should be pretty easy to handle. As long as you don't get any slower. Don't you worry about me. Sure you don't want a gun? I said I'll be fine. Just saying. Chris? What's up? Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. You want to talk here? Uh, I'm expecting someone, so uh, let's talk in the office. Sure. I'll cut to the chase. Your plans for expanding the company is just not going to happen. 
Wait, uh, but you told me that... I know, but my father's own business is tanked, so there's nothing I can get from him. The company's doing fine. We'll just take our time. Time is not what I have. Why not? I already know you or the company can't lend me the $10,000 I need to save my home and other things. Other things, like your boat, your jet skis, your extra other sports cars. Why don't you sell one of those? I, I never had a dream to become a carpenter like you. Then why did you get involved in the first place? False hopes? No, no. There is hope, okay? The company has a good foundation and we'll just have to grow slower. I take it you can't afford my share of the company. Who is this? It's a friend of my dad's. He's uh, looking to diversify his investments. You want to sell your half of the company? He's not looking for partners. You bring in a buyer for our company and not talk to me first? I, I don't want to sell. Think of what you could do with your share of the money. You mean start over? Well, you won't be able to sell cabinets, at least not around here. We'll have to sign a non-compete clause, and then the 12 employees, minus Steve, will go with the company. You know what? Maybe we shouldn't be partners anymore. How much? I know it's not what you'd expect, but he has the money now. How much? Chris, this is Bill. Bill, Chris. Tell them what your offer is. Well, if everything Dave tells me is true, I would be willing to buy you both out for $750,000. Well, that's enough for your half. Because I know you can afford more, and Chris is right, the company's worth a lot more than that. I could up the price to $850,000 on one condition. I need you to stay here and run things for me. Okay, you up the price to 1.3 million, and I'll stay on and train your people for two months. I'm not that interested in making cabinets. Fine, I'm willing to wait for the right buyer. Chris, think about it. You go to wherever it is you were talking about and build that orphanage. I, I need to talk to Katie. You obviously didn't know your partner very well. Listen, Bill, give me a couple days to change his mind. I'm pulling the offer in one week. I'll be back soon, hon, just going on a short run. gonna happen. We'll get excited when your water breaks. Where are you running to? Just down Jackson and over to Adams, okay? Just a few short miles with Dave and the business. I just need to clear my mind. What's wrong? My water broke. Go find Chris. Where's Chris? He, he's on a run. Where does he run? He's running on Jackson and Adams. Hurry! easy. Didn't even have to use my perch for little bricks.
top. It was a lucky blow. He saw you, though. We need to finish this. Find out what hospital they're taking you to. Here, take my car. Beat this guy up over here. Is he gonna make it? I don't think so. I gotta get back. What's this neighborhood coming to, huh? Yeah. We don't need to go to the hospital. He's not gonna make it. All doctors to the ER. still alive. Oh, thank you, Lord. I knew it. They were able to revive him on the way to the hospital. Is he okay? Can I see him? We're still doing tests. <laughs> right now, we need to take care of you, <laughs> nurse. <laughs> What's his name? Oh, I like that. I like that. Ben, meet your mama. But you know what happens to a brain when it's without oxygen far too long? I would also like to ask Katie if she'd be willing to sign a donor form. But he's my only son. My daughter-in-law will never see her husband again. My grandchild will never know his father. I think we can wait a little longer on that. It could be a while before Chris can come. Well, maybe we can find out now. Doctor, when can I see my husband? Nurse, would you please excuse us? Katie, your parents are flying in. What about Chris? Um, uh, Chris, um... No. 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 <laughs> Doctor, you said he was going to be okay. Chris is technically alive, but he's in a deep coma. <laughs> so we just need some time? Chris is set on a course that can't be changed. Has your husband had a run-in with anybody who wanted him dead? Everybody loves Chris. He has nothing but friends. Oh, wait. Chris fired an employee who took a swing at him the other day. What was his name? Steve. I can't remember his last name. Wilson. Steve Wilson. 
And the other guy? Probably his loser of a father. That sounds like a good lead. I'll get on that. Here's my card. If you think of anything else, let me know. We will. Katie, I know this is not what either of us expected to happen, but I want you to know. Don't say it. Chris is going to be fine. If you need anything. Chris always sought to help others. Wouldn't you think you want his legacy of helping to continue? But you just don't understand. I understand that if you do sign, the life that was in Chris will help benefit the lives of another person. But what about my dream? I just know that Chris is going to do something wonderful for the Lord. Are you sure it's God's will or your own? God has a thousand ways of accomplishing his goals, even after Chris is gone. I just don't know how you can do it. Chris was your only son. If it'll save a life, I know that Chris will live again in the resurrection. Well, can we choose who his organs go to? No. Well, what if we're saving the life of a bad person? Oh, Katie, <sighs> there's always hope that the gift of life will save a person in more ways than one. I just want to know why. Perhaps in time you will. So 
See you again. <laughs> and he thinks he can hide behind his bag. Told you. You should never trust a dirty cop. We still can't figure out how you know what our plans were. It's a matter of being in the right place at the right time. I could use someone with talents like yours. Yeah. What's in it for me? Me? My badge of protection, of course. <laughs> right. Sorry. Too dark for me to play there. There you go. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Too much of being at the right place at the right time. If you make it, look me up. Otherwise, you won't be needing this. So I got a man shot. Heard by the water fountain downtown. Careful. This guy's a hero. He saved my life. And how's that? Two guys pulled up in a black SUV. Started shooting. He jumped in front of me and he took a bullet. The SUV was probably stolen. That's a possibility. How do you even know it was you they were shooting at? Because this guy's no hero. I guess I just don't know. Poor fellow was going to end up in here soon, whether he knew it or not. He's got a viral syndrome that caused the cardiomyopathy. Unless we find him a heart soon, he's not going to live long. I never thought I'd say this, but provided we find him a heart, it's a good thing this guy got shot. There he is, the guy that saved my life. Is he gonna make it? Yeah, he's gonna be great now that he has a new heart. Well, okay. I'll stand over here and you take the picture. So how does it feel to be a hero? I'm no hero. A modest hero at that. Katie? Look at this. Wouldn't it be something if this is the kind of guy Chris's heart saved? A hero? But if it isn't, I might be better off not knowing. True. To find out that some criminal got his heart would be disheartening. I don't want to know. No. But it is nice to imagine that 
people are being affected positively by Chris's life. It really is. I really miss him. I really miss him so much. Good morning. You're wasting your time. Actually, I was here to visit the other guy. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, nice try, but he's gone. Well, mostly. No, not him. The hero I read about in the paper. <sighs> yeah. No, he's not here either. So, am I dealing with a counterfeit? No more than the counterfeits that call themselves Christians. Well, a counterfeit is proof of a genuine. Yeah? So what's a genuine Christian actually look like then? Well, other than kind and helpful, caring, patient, and humble, there are two foundational characteristics from which all these good attributes spring. Do you mind? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, which he also said in John 14 is a prerequisite for receiving the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Ten Commandments written in stone by the finger of God. And that's the first point. Yeah, and the other? Having the testimony or faith of Jesus. Um, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, said the whole duty of man is to reverence God and keep His commandments. Referring to God's true people, Revelations also says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Then I know a lot of counterfeits. You're right. First John says, he that says, I know Jesus and keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Well, I'm not interested. Well, if you ever have the slightest interest in a new life, repenting and trusting that Jesus loves you and forgives you is where you start. Oh, I've got a new start. And what are you going to do with that new start? My interests lie elsewhere. Look, I just want to be anywhere but here. In a few months, I'm taking a group of young people on a mission trip to Central America. We're going down to build an orphanage. We're staying at a place where there's no electricity, no running water. I think it would be a great place to test out your new heart. Well, like I said, I'm not interested. He would have gone. Well, not now. He's had a change of body. <laughs> <coughs> How's the new engine? How's the new air piece? <laughs> Same old Frank. How are you with traveler's checks? 
I'm good. But I'm not interested. I just wanted to see where your head was. I have someone who is, but she'll need some training. Fearless, huh? To a fault. Maybe before she gets caught, we can make a few million. That's where you come in. I'm listening. Cover our tracks, connected to her. I'll think about it. Actually, I need this to happen. So consider the game in play. I said I'll think about it. Don't you back out on me. You owe me. After that last job, I'd say that's debatable. He's too deep into our business. If he doesn't do this, I'll take care of me. You're doing well. It's almost like the heart was made for you. What else is bothering you? I'm not sure. This was a big deal. It could easily make you look at your life differently. Well, I'm definitely looking at life differently now. I'm not sure I like it. That's a different kind of healing. You know, sometimes when someone gets a heart transplant, they get more than just the heart. What do you mean? I mean, sometimes they actually start to take on the different characteristics of the donor, even their likes and dislikes. Is that permanent? It can be. It's up to you. You can choose to accept the changes, or you can fight to resist them. I haven't forgotten who I am. Or was. Maybe you should find out who this was. How? You can meet his wife. She's from around here. You know, she almost didn't sign the donor card. Yeah, I don't know. Look, all I'm saying is maybe there's something bigger at work here than what meets the eye. Like what? Like why did she change her mind? I mean, think about it. If she had signed that card a little bit earlier, or a little bit later, someone else would have that heart, and you'd be dead. I see your point. I just think it could be a good place to start. There you go, sweetheart. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, mm -hmm. dear. You know, Katie, maybe now you can put away your fears about Chris's heart going to the wrong kind of person. I think I can. <laughs> you think I should take Bree with me? Whether she understands or not, it won't hurt anything. <laughs> I'm not sure why I agreed to this. So why go through with it? Curiosity, I guess. This doesn't happen every day. So you want me to call you? Yeah. All right, I'll call you in five. you from the article. I'm Katie. I'm Frank. And yeah, don't believe everything you read in the papers. Uh, this is Bree. Bree, do you remember what I was telling you about earlier? This is the man who has your daddy's heart. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> yeah, this is for you. Thank you. She has a younger brother, Benjamin. Mm. He was born on the night this whole journey began. <laughs> Hey guys, what can I get you to drink today? Water, lemon. Okay. We'll have the same. Okay, great. So, 
Can you feel a difference? You mean in my chest? Yeah. Only from the scarring, otherwise not much. This was an amazing story. I'm so happy it was someone like you that has Chris's heart. Hey, I'm just sorry that you even had to make a decision like that. It wasn't easy, but I'm learning to trust in God's plan for our lives. I'm just trying to stay out of the way. So do you really believe that uh, God has a plan for me in all of this? Of course. That's why you're the recipient of Chris's heart. Hey. Yeah, is she cute? Yeah, the car is doing just fine. All right, I'll be outside. A new car? A new engine, it's running good. Here are your waters. Chris was a good man. He was always doing something good for someone. I had to get used to cooking for all the homeless people he would pick up off the street. It sounds dangerous. Yeah, but Chris would say, I'd rather get hurt doing something good than never do anything good at all. Are you happy? Knowing that the heart you have comes from a good man? Yeah, of course. I can hear Daddy's heart. So how old were you when you lost your mother? About six months. So you've lost both your parents? I'm so sorry. Oh, I have to pick up Benjamin. Shall we do this again sometime? Sure. I'll be in touch. Man, this is weird. What? So that's the wife of the man whose art you have? Yeah. Why, you know her? That's the wife of the man who you killed. Are you sure? Well, despite the fact that she was pregnant the last time I saw her, yeah. So after Brie laid her head on his chest, I could see that it really affected him. I think in a good way. So are you going to see him again? Oh, you were. But now I'm having second thoughts. Maybe it's too soon. Yeah. Frank, where are you at? What do you want, Sydney? You know what I want. And it's time to get started. Yeah. You're gonna have to find someone else. No one knows my business like you. Well, then you know what I can do to you. Are you threatening me? <sighs> Things have changed. Look, all I'm saying is that your secrets are safe with me. If you leave me alone, So what do you do? I waitress. Mm -hmm. That pays all right. There's something I'd really like to do, though. What's up? It's silly. Well, go on, silly. I like to model. I think I'd be good at it. Yeah, I'm sure, actually. I think I know somebody who's looking for someone. Really? Yeah. I think I could get you in. you do that for me? Oh, yeah, of course. That's nice. Come with me.
Tony, what's happening? Tony. I need to know where Frank is. I don't know where he is. Where are we going? You need to change Frank's mind about working with us. Listen, I don't know what happened. But Frank's just not Frank anymore. If you don't tell us where he is... The riverfront? How cliché. It suits my needs. Get out. Missing something? What? Concrete shoes. I know a couple places where he might be. Do you have a piece of paper? Start. Do you know where Marty's bar is? Been there. They said he hasn't been coming around. Uh, he's uh, been trying to get back into shape. Have you been to the gym? He has his own gym. Have you been to the graveyard? Why would he go there? Visit his mother's gravesite. You're stalling. Last chance. I don't know where he is. But he's of no use to either one of us. So there's no point in killing me. I believe you. Why do you think he changed? Staring death in the face? Living with the heart of another man in his chest? I don't know. So if he isn't for me, then he is against me. Can you take a message to Frank for me? Sure. What is it? down by the riverfront. The gunshots. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I got you, buddy. I got you. An ambulance is on its way. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta take care of this. In there, Tony. I'm not going in there. Oh. 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 Tony. for Frank's head.
Hello, Pastor. This is Frank. Say about that missionary trip is that uh, is that opportunity still open? Hey, that's Frank. You know who those guys are? No. I don't need any more enemies. Find them and make sure they get paid. Good job, guys. It's the least we can do after shooting you. I knew I wasn't the target. You guys actually saved my life. Well, I'm glad we can help you. Who was that guy anyway? Guy you don't want to mess with. Thanks to he's off my back. Well, what makes you think you two not gonna cross paths again? Where I'm going, it's not gonna happen. You think he'll come? I'm not sure. Should we go ahead and load the bus? Well, not everyone's here yet. According to the list, it looks like we do have everybody that's signed up. At the There's moment. one more. Good evening. <clears throat> hey. Who is that? This Elder Eli, the tribal leader. Tribal leader. Hey, why do you guys come out here and do this? The same reason Jesus came to earth. Why is that? Because he came here not to be served, but to serve.
long do you plan to stay here? As long as it takes. Takes for what? Things aren't where they need to be back home. And besides, there's a need for a school out here. Well, we're out of funds. I know, but I have some extra money laid aside in an offshore account. <laughs> oh, you're serious. And hey, I like the scenery out here. You be sure to take care of my new friends, okay? Will do. I had some leftover bug spray. Thanks. You're welcome. Here's my mosquito net. Oh, I will use that. Thanks, man. Oh, um, I have something for you. Um, Liz said to bring it, but uh, I guess I didn't need it. You can take it. Maybe next year. See you later, man. Everyone's traveling so light. It's customary to leave stuff behind for those who need it. Hey, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I guess I'll see you guys on the other side of darkness. Hey, Amen. Right, take care, buddy. Your hunger for the war is strong. My situation has been a unique inspiration. How's that? Just knowing that my sins, that knowing that our sins have killed an innocent man, God even, and that by accepting Christ's heart into our lives, that we get to live. Listen, love plus forgiveness equal grace. If God didn't love us, he wouldn't forgive us. His death on the cross show us just how great his love and mercy really are. For by forgiveness we are saved. So why then do some people think that the Ten Commandments, the only part in the Bible written by God's own finger, in stone, could be done away with? Because they want to continue in sin. If we all naturally love each other, then there will be no need for the law to do so. Like the law for speeding. If we all naturally drove safely and reasonably, then there would be no need for a defined speed limit. Correct. The sacrificial law, Christ the Lamb, was nailed on the cross, not a Ten Commandment, moral law. He didn't die for us to continue in sin. No. Christ come to die for what? Us. Our sins. Which is the transgression of the law. Exactly. It is because the law can be done away with that Christ had to die. For if the law could have been done away with, then Jesus wouldn't have had to die. You have a learn in six months. The other people could take a year to learn. Congratulations. <laughs> wow, what's the special occasion? I wanted to show you my appreciation for not selling the cabinet shop and for keeping things going. Well, it has been a rough year, even with Chris's insurance money. Well, I'm here to help if you need anything. That's a possibility. 
And I was beginning to think you hadn't noticed my change. I thought at first there was someone else. And what happened? I don't know. Well, I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere. Bree and I are going on a missionary trip in a couple of months. Would you like to come along? Where are you going? Central America. I'm going to be teaching at a new orphanage for a week. Is this a church thing? Yes. I'm not sure. Let me check my calendar. This looks delicious. Shall we eat? Okay. Disculpe, señor, me ayuda. Excuse me, can you help me carry this? Thank you. Just up here. inside and take care of this, you know? Actually, I should be going. No, don't. My husband's not here yet, and he's not going to be here anytime soon. It's OK. No, this isn't right. Perdona me, senora. What, am I not good enough for you or something? Thank you so much for watching Benjamin for me. Yeah. You know I hate leaving him, oh, but I feel like this is something I need to do. Well, I have been looking so forward to this. <laughs> Did you ever find out what happened to Frank? No. We probably thought it was just too weird, us being together given the circumstances. True. <laughs> but we've got to be going. So I'll see you in about 10 days. ¿Qué está pasando aquí? Ese americano se trató de meter conmigo. ¿Qué no me crees? No. Mira, aquí está su pañuelo. ¿Ahora qué vas a hacer? De eso yo me encargo después. This guy came with us last year and didn't go back home. And now he's built a school. You're quite the carpenter. Thanks. You look so much like a guy I once knew. I didn't know him very well. What happened? I don't know. He disappeared out of my life as quickly as he came into it. Were you hurt? More than expected. I'm sorry. Maybe he was trying to protect you from a greater pain. Maybe some things are worth suffering for. 
And how would you know what's worth suffering for? You don't always know. But hope sees you through. But you moved on, right? Yeah. But only after losing hope. Good. Because the truth here will only dash your hopes again. When I saw the children run to you, joy filled my heart as I remembered a dream I had of Chris now being fulfilled in you. So truth, painful as it may be at first, is designed to save. So God's plan is at work. Can you say you haven't changed since receiving Chris's heart? No. No. How's your little girl? She's great. You wouldn't believe how much he's grown. Who's that? That's Dave. He was Chris's best friend in high school. He was there when I needed someone. Katie, if you don't mind, what exactly was the cause of Chris's death? Please, it's important. He was beaten and stabbed under his heart by a man and a woman. Dave actually got a picture of them running away on his phone. Really? It was only of their backside. We thought it was an ex-employee and his father, but they had a really good alibi. So the picture really didn't help then? No. Chris died, but the EMTs got his heart going again. His brain had been without oxygen for too long, and... Ugh. I just feel bad that someone had to die for me to get the picture. Like the thief on the cross. Better late than never. Katie, I just realized there's something that I need to take care of. Excuse me, but please, let's, let's talk again. Thanks a lot. Hello? Hello, Detective. It's Paul. Paul who? Yeah, you know me as Frank. Frank? Man, I thought you were dead. Well, Frank is dead. Just call me Paul. I've got some information to share. I want to cut a deal. Well, I've got information about a murder and a dozen other crimes in the area. I'm not sure I can or even if I should. Come down to my office. We'll try to work something out. I'm out of the country. I can't safely return until we do this. Frank. Paul. Te voy a enseñar a no meterte con mi mujer. Ey, no lo mate todavía. No sé si él es el culpable. Waking up. Let's go get them. <clears throat> oh, how long? About three days. You're still here. I didn't want to leave until I knew you were going to be okay. Where are the children? They're at the church, praying. <sighs> Would you go and let them know that I'm awake? <clears throat> Your 
you're gonna have some scars. <sighs> so will you. Hello, detective. Frank? Or is it Paul? It's Paul. From the sound of it, trouble finds you wherever you go. Yeah, but there's a better reason for it now. What's your name? There's more to it than that. Right now, there's a family that needs your protection. I can't guarantee any deals. Deal or no deal, you need to hear what I have to say. Yes, officer. Can I help you? You David Solomon? Yes. Step out, please. You under arrest for the murder of Chris Jacobs. David, keep your hands up in the air. Face the other direction. Get down on your knees. Put your hands behind your head. Give me your left hand. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. Adios. Adios. Yo regreso de. Yo regreso de. Good to see you. Katie, I... I have a confession to make. No. You're here. You've already made it. No, really, there's something that I have to tell you. No. I... No. You don't. It hurt at first. It took me a while. Katie, what, what are you trying to say? Just know, without a doubt, you have been forgiven. struggle for answers. The detective told me everything. Well, that was, um... Helpful. Not quite what I was thinking, but... But it was helpful. I'm sorry. You know what I did to Chris? And, and how Dave came and took advantage and... Stop. I know. And you have been forgiven. How can you? Who knows what you saved me from by turning David. And besides, there's more going on here than you know. Do Chris's parents know? They don't know everything that I need to speak with them too. I think that would be a good idea. Should we go now? Yes. Let me just call a neighbor to watch the kids. I'll be with you in just a moment.
Detective? He's here. There's something I need to tell you. In exchange for information about you, the detective made me agree to let him know if you showed up. You said you forgave me. I have. But Chris's parents don't know everything. And neither do you. Well, I guess not. It's not over. I made an agreement with the detective as well. Yeah? And what's that? Are you truly sorry for what you have done? Yeah. Then you'll accept the consequences of your actions. What is it that you want me to do? I'm surprised you're back so soon. You know you're not safe around here. I thought it was worth the risk. Did you really think he wouldn't have to stand trial? I was hoping for a little mercy. From me? Turn around. No, I pegged you wrong. It's not from me you have to get mercy from. It's the ones you hurt. Katie, is everything all right? Dad, Mom, I have someone I would like you to meet. Sure, come on in. Karen, John, this is the person responsible for discovering Chris's killer. Normally we would say thank you, but it's our understanding you had something to do with his death. That's correct. Saying I'm sorry doesn't seem enough. But I'm here seeking your forgiveness. Then why the handcuffs? A person is guilty until they're forgiven. I need to know one thing. Was what you did to Chris, was it premeditated? Yes. I would like to press charges. He's not that man anymore. I'm not so sure I can forgive him as easily as you have. And besides, I know prison conversions. The motivation to stay a free man will make a guy do almost anything. You think this was easy for me? To forgive the man who had a part in killing the man I love? I struggled for a long time to forgive him. And then I realized I want forgiveness from God. Then I have to forgive those who have sinned against me. Then he should be willing to accept the consequences of his action. I didn't catch him. He made first contact. Sir, I agree with you. Sometimes I think I've paid, but I know that's not true. I don't fear prison, though, because I've already been imprisoned by guilt. How have you paid? Because of my actions. I lost my only brother. I pulled him out of a river after he was shot. What happened? Well, after receiving Chris's, your son's heart, the crime no longer appealed to me. But those I worked with feared I'd turn on them because I knew too much. And when they couldn't find me, they killed my brother, Tony, to send me a message. And that's when you fled the country? Yes. Karen? I know Chris was John's only son, but didn't you have a son before you met John? Yes. He, um, and I were not married. 
And um, I became a Christian. He didn't want anything to do with me, but he did want our son. I thought we were in for a real battle for custody, but uh, then our son died. How? He um, was taking me to my new Christian friend's home to live, and it was a stormy night out. And another car crossed over into our lane. To avoid hitting it head on, we drove off into a river. The car began to fill up with water. A Anton got out with our son. And then I got out, but the current washed me down the river. It was too dark to see anything. I had kept swimming until I hit shore. I could hear people yelling for me. I followed their voices back to the bridge where I could see cars stopping to help. That's when I found out we had lost our son to the river. Yeah. Did they ever find your son? No. What happened to your real mother? Um, my father told me that she drowned when the car she was in, when the car she was in lost control, went into a river. Sound familiar? Yes. You need to ask him his name. I know his name. It's Frank. Go ahead, ask him. It's Paul. It was the name my mother gave me before she died. My father nicknamed me Frank after she died. Jackie, your stepmother confessed that Anton had lied to both of you about what happened to the others. That Anton's father was the one that ran you off the road. No, 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 I visit her grave regularly. Your father lied to you about your mother's gravestone, knowing you wouldn't look for it if you knew she was dead. <laughs> this is my son. killed your only son, my brother. If you never forgave me, I wouldn't blame you. John, my son who I thought was dead, he's alive. Your son, it's why my son is alive. Please forgive him and let them come home. Yes, yes, welcome home, son. Welcome home. <laughs> Indeed, now you are free. When you finish up here, we just have one more stop.
Thank you.